I think real time, I think StarCraft particularly is my favorite esport to watch because mm. it's like one on uh. one and you get to see like this, this God view of what's happening to it's, both. It's but better chess. It's better chess. It's yeah. Chess, but fast with guns. <laughs> <laughs> Young junk. You know what's great about Tubby Talk is it's in real time. We don't do slow-mo. We don't take turns. We're just all going at the same time, right? No script. No script. All at the same time talking over each other. It's great. That's what it is. And you know there's games that are kind of like that too, where stuff just keeps happening. Just doesn't stop. Except unlike us, you have like omniscient view over top, typically. We're talking real-time strategy games. Yeah. Um, and you it's love one, these games. Oh, it's one of my favorite genres. Uh, I, even though I can't say I have a breadth of them, I've got, played a couple of them to death. I think beyond death, right? Aren't yeah, you essentially yeah. one of the lords of StarCraft? No, nowhere near it. But I, I, I got you're a minor local StarCraft lord. Not even. So StarCraft 2, I, I did get to Diamond League, and I felt very good about Diamond League. But Diamond League is like... Anyone who's serious about the game is like, well, Diamond League's really, nice, really Wood League. Is that what you said? Nice saying? start, kiddo. <laughs> is yeah. there Rocket League? Uh, Rocket League is no, no, there's no Rocket League yeah, in but StarCraft. St- StarCraft, you, space, yeah, rockets. It would make <laughs> sense. You don't fly a diamond into space. I mean, you don't make the medals out of rockets, though, either. That's true. I mean, you should. The rockets of your defeated enemies. Hit it on your chest. <laughs> <laughs> I would argue that maybe Blizzard made the biggest. Real-time strategy games of all time, those being Warcraft and StarCraft, is that fair? Yeah, I think it would be hard to argue against that. Like, okay. they definitely, yeah, anything that ends in a craft, they, they got down pretty good. Uh, I mean, people also love Command & Conquer, Red Alert, um, and uh, Age of Empires 2 particularly, which was Microsoft Game Age of Empires is, I thought it was turn-based for some reason. It's no, time. it's real time. It's real time. 2019. Oh, man, you're doing new stuff. Well, oh, no, that's a <laughs> yeah, new release. Oh, oh, release. Yeah, I see. see, that's the problem. The problem with the future is that everything is old is new again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Why design your own real time strategy game? You can just uh, gussy up somebody else's real time strategy. Game. What is a real time strategy game? You, stra- you strategize in real time. <laughs> yeah. yeah, good job. Just like we do right yeah. now. <laughs> oh, typically uh, it's a Retreat. war. <laughs> typically it's like a war game. Played from an overhead perspective, yep. and you issue Ew. commands to troops, and they attack things and defend things, and buildings are destroyed, resources are collected. Yeah, usually it's resource collection, attacking, defense, and uh, that, that's kind yeah, of the long simultaneous term. with your enemy. But you can't pause. I mean, you can pause, but not do things while you're paused. Yeah. It's also a turn-based strategy game where you take turns uh, doing all those things. Yeah. So, you know, there's, that means that there's a lot to the game that is more sport-like. Mm-hmm. Esports, perhaps. Really? Yeah, because these are the games that you have to execute. Execution is a huge part of it, and it's very hard. Mm-hmm. Being like a high level StarCraft player, you have to be an insane genius and, and really training fast. involved. You have to be able to move your fingers and wrists fast enough to be able to do uh, input the commands per minute or the so actions the, per minute. Yeah, the so they measure it in this this thing called actions per minute APM. Okay. And the really good people have APMs. 400s, 500s, which means they're clicking or pressing a button 400, 500 times a minute. Mm -hmm. Which is disgusting. Yes. (laughs) I mean, it is. That's crazy. So I, I, uh, uh, these games always seem a little bit intimidating when you get started, I think. But for me, this was kind of the first one that I remember, which is Warcraft. And mouse-based games to kind of go in line with what you're saying. Like, like, well, I, I we'll probably get into it in a little bit that these were on consoles as well, but I feel like these found a home on computers. Yeah, because it's definitely one of those games where the interface, having a mouse and a keyboard is the ideal way to play, and nobody has done better since. Mm. So if you don't have that, it kind of sucks. In fact, some of these games were ported to the Super Nintendo, and you could use the Super Nintendo mouse to mm. play them. Really? Yeah. The Super Nintendo mouse had something to do other than Mario Paint, right? Act as a fly swatter in Mario Paint. <laughs> in fact, you could use the tangent. You could use the mouse uh, to play Doom on the Super Nintendo, Wolfenstein on the Super Nintendo, and you could use it to play uh, the the interior levels of Jurassic Park on the Super Nintendo. What? But not the exterior <laughs> levels. What? Because it switched to this like 3D mode. So you use the mouse to move around 3D, but once you stepped out, I remember that. you had to switch back to a controller. That's pretty funny. Yeah. But, I mean, as we're seeing here, like, part of it was you had to select multiple units units to do things at the same time. Something I always loved about this game is, like, they talk to you. Yeah. Zug, zug. Oh, work's done. 
which I thought was always fun. And that was one of the things I made. Yeah. <laughs> it gave Blizzard um, a character that a lot of other yeah. games didn't have. They would have like 10 or 12 lines sometimes, like they're cycle through. See, now I want to play this. Mm-hmm. Like, there, it, there's something about this aesthetic and then <laughs> with pixel art. With the pixel art and the big clunky and that, that MIDI music going. Yeah. Feels right. But, I mean, the, the reason I'm showing this is this is, you know, one of the earliest examples I can remember of this. I'm sure you'll, you'll surprise me with other ones. But I remember this just being on people's computers. I remember this, like, you'd hop on Earthlink and, <laughs> you know, look at a game FAQ of, of you know, how to play this game. And I think a lot of it was, you, you said this before we were on the air, but, like, Tower Defense is essentially also this kind of game. Is that right? It's, it's yeah. Sim- it's a similar style of game. It's a game where you are protecting a base or a core from waves of enemies that are sent at you, like normally on a, on a timer. Mm-hmm. So you have a certain amount of time and a limited number of resources to build defenses. And you you got to build fire. walls or build cannons to shoot at them or build arrows. Uh, so it's similar, but a little simpler, I would say, because you're, you're not controlling units. You're just kind of controlling this layout of your, your base. Whereas you're saying this is harder and that you have to have someone mining over here and yeah, someone it's, it's more, defending over yeah, here complex. and attacking over here yeah, and more exploring complex, yeah. over here. More complex. I forgot about the exploration of these games, though, of yeah, like uncovering the, the map. War. Yeah. yeah, and this was um, the Warcraft 1. You could only build on predefined roads. Huh. Uh, and so you were a bit limited in like what you could do with the bases. That changed in Warcraft 2 later on. But there's, man, there is an appeal to the simplicity uh, and... Like I said, like this makes me just itch to click a big chunky mouse. Yeah, it also makes you feel like you want to play a computer game where you're just click to kill, click to this, doing that. I mean, like just, I mean, I don't know if we're watching like a superstar play here. Uh, you wouldn't know. But for me, like this is moving kind of fast. And the fact that you have to click a person to like fire a thing, but then there's also automatic. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, it, it teaches gets- you how to be a leader, I suppose. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So yeah. you you played this on PC, I'm guessing. This with this and StarCraft mm-hmm. were uh, games that I witnessed others play on PC. This was one of those games that like you had a buddy who was obsessed with, and you just watched him play it late into the night while you're you know drinking soda or something <laughs> like that. And um, so I, I always liked you know like the characters and the sounds and like there's the one there's the soldiers. It looks like they're playing with the orcs, but if you play with yeah. the humans. They're always saying things like, what is it? Okay. <laughs> yes, me lord. <laughs> Pick number three, sir. And, you know, that kind of thing. And so I like the aesthetic of it. I, I don't know. This also just, this is like such a computery computer game, if that makes <laughs> yeah. sense. Oh, no, it totally does. I, I feel the same way. You, this, like, it feels right on a computer, on a monitor it, with. It hmm. surpasses the sprite limit of an NES, I would think. Oh, yeah, of an NES for sure. Yeah, it's got those deep colors, but it's still chunky. Um, there's That's something about had, this what, era. That guy's 24, name is Fallon. Thousand colors could be displayed at that point. Yeah. Something like that. But it was, was also when the computers did things that the consoles couldn't. Yes. Like they, I guess, outperformed them, but at the same time, so did the consoles. Like they were still in their own silos. Yeah, and they were good at different things. So yeah. the computers were great at having, you know, that interface of the mouse and keyboard. They could show more colors typically. Their, the CPUs were faster, so they could do more calculations. But they were worse at showing graphics. Hmm. So the NES was really good at scrolling graphics and, yep. and backgrounds. And that's something that PCs struggled with for years uh, until, like, I mean, not quite till, but they made discrete GPUs that could mm-hmm. handle the graphics processing. Um, and, that, and that's something like you could not make Mario Brothers on a PC at the time. It wasn't a thing. I didn't realize what? that was the te- technical limitation yeah, of it. Yeah. That was a technical limit. And um, one of the, so the founders of id Software, uh, one of them was John Carmack, who is known as like a really clever programmer. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the other one was John Romero. John Romero, who is actually also great. Uh, but John Carmack was the tech guy. And he wrote the engine for Doom and Wolfenstein and all those things. And uh, they made this game on the PC. They were like, we want to show that PCs can do what consoles can do. And so he found a way that to, to make a Mario-like game. And I believe it's called Dangerous Dan in Copyright Infringement. Look that up. <laughs> yeah. Dangerous Dan in Copyright Infringement. And it's basically a clone of Mario 3 that runs on a PC. And at the time, that was like, whoa, how'd this guy pull this off? Yeah, Dangerous Dave. 
There you go. Oh, wow. That is. <laughs> the judge in the corner is the best. <laughs> Whoa. So this is just trying to. I remember this. You played this. I, I, I remember. I think Dangerous Dave was in other things. I remember this little dude. Okay. I don't, I don't think I played him in this game, but this is pretty funny. But this was, yeah, basically a, a little like proof of concept to show, hey, we can do smoothly scrolling backgrounds, which is something that PCs did not have built in. So he had to write the software that did it. Um, they also made their own coin. That was interesting. Yeah. To me. I uh, guess to nobody own, else. Their own coin? <laughs> yeah, like it, that, that didn't look like a Mario coin. Oh, yeah. So these are all, they're not. It's like the cloud isn't quite right yeah like they're redrawn <laughs> like they took the time to redraw it oh you can't finish it either yeah it's whoa <laughs> dangerous dave just one up nintendo he's going left <laughs> yeah it's a big deal it's a big deal but yeah this was a huge deal and um you know it, this was really just to prove they could do it like hey pcs can do this but it wasn't a thing they did wait mm -hmm. There's a stage in Super Mario Wonder, one of the bonus stages where it that layout for one of the sections, the vertical section near the end. It looks just like that. But you're right. Yeah, the the coins, yeah, they're all weird. It's like they drew these similar on purpose, like to yeah. to make you think of Mario three, but not be Mario three. Unreleased prototype. Wow. But yeah, this is the sort of stuff that PCs couldn't do back then. Until this guy figured it out. He figured it out, but like no one really Cared. followed up on yeah. it. Yeah, so they were just Well, like, there was something to be said about, like, computer games were computer games, and video games were video games during this time, in my opinion. Yeah. And a lot of that was, like, one is played on the TV, and one is played on the monitor, and, mm -hmm. and they're... For some reason, it's the same technology as a CRT display, but in my mind, they're two different devices as exactly. a kid. I was just about to say, yeah, it was on a monitor, but it was like, the well, monitor was still CRT. Yeah. Technology, at least. And the connection's different, so it would have, um, you know, a VGA connection, There's which... The RF... Yeah, which the, and the RF connections we used to use as kids like were terrible. They yeah. had all this noise. It's basically using an antenna to to jack through, and it looked awful. But they always had this crispness. And StarCraft now. I remember when GameCube came out. I was so sure that I needed an RF switch, mm. and and I was talking to my dad about it. Like, are you sure you need this? I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've needed it for everything. <laughs> and then we realized like there is, you know, the RCA. Use, yeah, that that had came with it, and of course, I had already shredded the box from <laughs> you know, babbages. First, Did you guys have babbages? Yeah, we had babbages. So the first the thing you opened was the box of the R switch, yeah, because I'm like, no, 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 I can't play without this. <laughs> and my dad went to war trying to return that because I had shredded the box, and he, he was able to do it, but boy, he was mad at me. It was like $15, <laughs> yeah. $25, maybe because I couldn't just wait. And listen. Yeah, you don't want to get home and find out you can't connect in 64 to your TV. But I was also operating on previous information that I knew to be true. They swapped the TV on me. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. <laughs> they upgraded. You weren't even paying attention. But, but yeah, I this remember. Is, so this is StarCraft, the original StarCraft. Have you played this game? This is the one that I remember this game more than anything else because I had friends who were obsessed with this. And I played it a little bit. Yeah. But not that much. Did you play the campaign or did you play like versus your friends? Uh, the campaign, I suppose. Yeah. I don't ever remember sitting down and playing it against someone. Mm -hmm. I don't remember playing it on my own devices. But I remember the voices. I remember there was a bunch of different races. Um, like there's the robot lady and then there's... Who was... Who, okay. Walk me through. Who are, the, yeah. who are the races? So the races of the Terrans, which are basically Earthling humans. Yep. Uh, the Zerg, who are... They, I remember. Kind of like insectoid the, like yeah. bug things. Insectoid dinosaur monsters. They're the uh, Starship Troopers uh, antagonists. And then there's the Protoss, who are the psychic aliens wearing noble armor. Are they blue? They're kind of blue, yeah. yeah. They got purple. blue, gray skin, and their, their color scheme is kind of blue and yellow. Yeah, I distinctly remember... Starcraft more than any other version of this game and which which came out shortly after Warcraft it was just the yeah. idea of Warcraft's fantasy in the past and this is sci-fi right yep. yeah it was uh, derided as orcs in space yeah at first they're like oh it's just orcs in space and originally the prototypes are doing they're just it's basically reskinned Warcraft orcs in space <laughs> but they changed it a good amount from that and they added you know just having that third race really changes the rock paper scissors of the whole yeah. game because it'll be like, all right, I'm using a tank. Well, you know what's good against a tank? Something that flies. Oh, well, that sucks. Or if you're a psychic alien, you can 
use your mind control ray to take over that <laughs> tank. And now that tank is on your side and shooting your the other dudes. And it's like, okay, that's now something I need to look out for. Like, there's no perfect defense. And that's one of the things that makes StarCraft wonderful. And what was StarCraft on? Windows 98? Um... 95? 98? Definitely not, ran on 98. It might have been earlier. It might have been 95. Yeah. Yeah. Because uh, yeah. to me, I, it looks like a significant upgrade between Warcraft and StarCraft. Yeah. It was, it was There's a definitely. lot of stuff going on. Oh, yeah. That early, early 3D animation, those crawler things. I distinctly remember that. What's crazy is that this is made, the graphics are made similarly to the way they made Donkey Kong Country. And that oh, okay. It's all pre-rendered. It's pre-rendered, yeah. It's pre-rendered you can tell that down here, like this guy's face, which, who I don't remember at all. Yeah, that's... Why is uh, there a train conductor? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, I think they changed that guy, because that is the battlecruiser um, commander, but uh, I don't remember the mustache. Battlecruiser operational. Yeah, um, but yeah, I don't remember that mustache. That's like um, kind of a Tom Selleck-looking battlecruiser. <laughs> Yeah. Still Russian, though. It's important. He has to be Russian. The motto cannons fire. <laughs> that was my strategy a little bit. I played uh, StarCraft Brood Wars, I think it was. Yeah. You had a lot of the carriers, and they had like a super strong, like, oh, this is Blaster Brood Attack. Yeah. So Brood War was the expansion pack to the original StarCraft. Oh, my God. That's a great thing to talk about. Yes. Yeah. Yes. These games were the first time I remember you had to get the upgrades and the expansion packs and add more mm -hmm. things. And was it StarCraft 1 that had like four expansion packs or was StarCraft 2? Uh, StarCraft 2 it had... Was two because they split up the story amongst the, yeah, it was expansions. Split up a bunch. Yeah. yeah. It was like themed per like the races in the game. Do these games take a long time to develop or is it just Blizzard being Blizzard? A little of both. Okay. They are complicated games to get right. Uh, there's a lot of art and story building that goes into it, but also just like tons of playtesting is the, the impression that yeah. I've gotten all about yeah. it. Like, Especially early on because you couldn't update. We couldn't do balance patches like you can now. Yeah. So the expansions would basically be, hey, here's all the changes we wanted to make yeah. over the last two years. Like, we've just discovered that like this, yeah. this unit can be uh, totally... Too powerful. It kills everything if you do it this way. So we gotta nerf it, and the only way to do that is with an expansion pack. Mm -hmm. Have an expansion pack. It changes the units. You get some new units. Um, and I mean, we would eat it up because at the time it'd be like, oh, fifteen bucks. I get to keep playing this great game. There's a whole other campaign. Sure. It's like paying. It's like paying you guys seventy five percent less for a full game. Yeah. It wasn't, but it felt like it was. But I remember, like, I'd go to bed sometimes still thinking about like the units in this game and the scenarios, <laughs> and like, well, how would I? take that guy out like if giving the, the tools at my disposal like what am i not thinking what combinations because there's so many things really? visions of hydralisks yeah. dancing in your head yeah because a lot of these units will have like two or three or four abilities mm -hmm. and you know you, you think about what would that ability do on x unit and you know every race has 20 some units so there's a lot of combinations flying in there I think that might be the thing that kept me away from this is, you know, certainly in my, in my youth, um, I would stay away from a dense game. Yeah. These feel like the densest. Oh yeah. Definitely. There, there's, there's definitely a lot of density. Uh, and I would say though, that the campaign skews that pretty well. Cause the campaigns are all like, Hey, here's one unit. Here's how you use it. Mm -hmm. Go beat that guy with that unit. <laughs> and it's, it's kind of like a, a tutorial, but at the same time, it's got great production values and it's like, all right, you got this space hood. You got a space motorcycle. It lays mines. Go lay mines. Blow up these dudes. Go through a corridor. Which units were those? Uh, the vultures. Were those? I didn't realize they were. I thought they were hover ships the whole time. They're like, no, they're like space motorcycles. Yeah. <laughs> 72 Virgin. Yeah, these are fun. Yeah, this is the theory craft I would do in my head. Like, what would win? 24 <laughs> Zerglings or 17 vultures? What was that word you just said? Did you say theory, theory craft? craft? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which I, I don't know oh. if that comes from like old war gaming terms or if that comes from like war and Starcraft and theorizing about those games that end with craft. There's no way. Yeah, it, no, it has I, to yeah. be the craft. See, I would assume it came from another place. What? But I don't know. It's got to be just thinking a lot about Warcraft <laughs> and Starcraft. So that's that's the only way I've ever heard it. It was existed before I first heard the word theory craft. So hmm. that was always my assumption. I know people would do like war gaming on like an actual physical table, like oh. especially in like a comic book shop back in like the 70s and 80s. 
Which, which like inspired risk? a lot of this. No, like a full blown war. Like you have, like they would recreate like World War II battles. They'd and have things like, like terrain that. and yeah, like you put your units little on. Miniatures. Really? Yeah, so that's where like Warhammer came out of too. Like they were like, what if what are tanks but future? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it's funny you say Warhammer because is Warhammer part of this family? I know it's I know it's tabletop first, yeah. and I know there's a yeah. crazy amount of lore that's on top of it. But I know they did start making games. Yeah, they, I th- believe there's a real time strategy version of it. There um, is. I do know people. Uh, a lot of people like to accuse Blizzard of copying Warhammer mm-hmm. with. Uh, Jeez. And you'll see, like, yeah, with uh, StarCraft, I think the idea of like right? Space Marines, yeah. the way they portray them. Yeah, um, because in st- yeah, there's. There are Marines in StarCraft that are Terran Marines. Yeah. And they wear big bulky armor like the Warhammer characters. Yeah. There's also orcs in space in Warhammer. <laughs> but yeah. there were actually literal orcs in space in uh, StarCraft. They are in Warcraft, at least eventually. <laughs> That's a whole different thing. But yeah, so a lot of people are like, oh, they bit off of, War- of Warhammer. And yeah. maybe they kind of did. They were inspired by the inspired aesthetics. By the same thing. Yeah. The same way that you would say, you know, Warcraft will a bit off of Lord of the Rings. You know, it's got orcs and elves and dwarves like, yeah, Tolkien, man. Um, similar well, the, the themes. So I guess this is Warhammer. But OK, so is the, the top down part of it mm-hmm. is a big part of this. It right? is a big part is that you're, you're doing this as a as a like a god commander. It, yeah. And like that's how like the old wargaming tabletop, you know, experience would be. You're standing over the table and you're, you know, walking, changing your perspective to get different views of the battlefield as you you know push your units around. Um, so Which I'm, is interesting because it, this is a type, we've had an episode about this before. This is a type of game that directly translates from a board game. Yeah. 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 Right. Directly from a board game, only the pieces move on their own and in real time. Yeah, you don't have to micromanage them physically. <laughs> it's one of the, it, it could not exist as a board game, but it's very much inspired by board games. Yeah. Yeah. But it could be the kind of thing that you were yeah, talking I mean, about. Yeah. Back when people had much more time, AKA the seventies. You would just, yeah, like, um, I don't know if you ever saw, like, a, war, like a World War II movie, and you see, like, General Patton with his, like, baton, he's pushing things around on the board. Yeah. Like, that directly inspired tabletop wargaming, which directly inspired this. Yeah. But, yeah, the, the, being, uh, the computer take, uh, automates a lot of it, thankfully. Yeah. <laughs> so you don't have to worry about each one of your units, how much damage it takes, if it should be dead, if it should be falling over. Like, let the computer do that for you. Yeah, all all the units in real time strategy games typically have auto attack the second something's in range, and it automatically shoots at the first thing it sees. General Patton scene. General Patton. Because I know what you're talking about. Yeah, like uh, General Patton. You had like a riding crop. Like map. What's another thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. The the map pusher thing. It was like a the map pusher thing. (laughs) (laughs) It should come up with no, it didn't. (laughs) thing war yeah i know exactly what you're talking about i have no idea what it's called it's like a stick with the perpendicular uh pushing soldiers plow on the back of the board okay i don't know <laughs> dang it <laughs> well then there there's, there's close. About, all right the this is what you were talking talkin about yeah yeah holy in the battle of waterloo with painted miniatures on a huge battlefield all right, so this is what we're talking about. This is what inspired yeah. these games, I have to ask. I would, it, I would it, imagine Including so. the top-down view. Like, how, how else can you control these units from a god-like vantage point than to view it as unto a god? <laughs> the video editor in me is screaming right now with all the dissolves. There we go. Okay, we're looking at still image. It was, it was, it was the this 90s. This is what inspired those types of real-time strategy games. Although that wasn't very real time, was it? No, not at all. Because they have people with tape measures measuring like, oh, the I range mean, isn't quite right there. The play was real time. It was just slow. Yeah. Because what, uh, compu- yeah. Why do you guys like these games? I mean, I, don't, I would like that. So I like these games because <laughs> there are just so many different combinations and so many ways to express strategies. And it's fun just to throw stuff at the wall and see what happens. There's something about collecting units and directing them to go somewhere and then it's and, and, maybe it's part of that god complex like you are controlling things you're sending them to their deaths but it's really more just it's this controlled environment of rules yeah like <laughs> you do like rules yeah, I was yeah. Gonna say, yeah like you enjoy the fact that you can think 
you come devise a strategy, uh, taking all the weaknesses and strengths of the units into account, and then you play it out, and it works out the way you played it out. Yeah. And every now and then, there's a little bit of randomness that's uh, introduced by something you didn't account for, and the, you know, like next, time, like you said, you can theory craft next time to account for that. But like being able to fit those those pegs into those holes and make it do what you want to do, like I can, I I see the appeal of that. I suppose yeah. it's the ultimate like guy who likes to run tests. You know, and experiments and figure what out, oh, well, I, I learned this. a bunch yeah. of things. And now with what I learned, how can I use it to conquer others? <laughs> <laughs> well, it'll be fun stuff. It'll be like, all right, how can I get through these defenses? And there'll be a unit that, you know, is a carrier that you can put other units into. You're like, all right, that's cool. What if I could cloak that unit so no one can see it? Mm-hmm. So I can load it up with all these terrifying, like, bomb creatures, move it over, cloak it. And then have them unload in the middle of someone's base without them being able to see it. Yeah. Like, the, the, will that the, the work? Bombalisks? I don't know. Let's try it. What? Well, not called Bombalisks. That was uh, the, 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 there's uh, Banelings. Banelings, yeah. Yeah. Banelings are one of the explodey units in, yeah. in StarCraft 2. And yeah, and so I, I enjoyed their RTSs I've played. Not as much as Chris by far. Um, mostly because of the, the real time part of it. I love being able to stop and think and devise what my plan is going to be and then put it into action and watch how it plays out mm-hmm. um with the pr- time pressure of a real-time strategy game i don't have the time to theor- you know theory craft my perfect attack or perfect approach which some people enjoy that uh reactivity but i don't like it when it's a game that complex where i'm going to forget something because i'm trying to you know i'm trying to cover my flank and i'm going to leave my uh rear open which is the point of the game is to learn how to manage those yeah Changes in attention, but, but it stresses you out. Not, yeah, it stresses out. It isn't fun for me. Yeah. Um, the thing I do enjoy with RTS is though is uh, the type of people that make these games mm-hmm. love these games and they make a detailed lore. And I love lore. So I love learning about the world they've created to support this game system, like StarCraft and Warcraft specifically. Yeah. So the lore behind it. Tons yeah. of it. Yeah. Like I played World of Warcraft, which was an MMO, just because I loved Warcraft 3 as a game and as a lore vehicle. And I was like, I really want to know more about these characters. I'll play this game that charges me 10 bucks a month to learn more about these characters for like two years. Yeah. And it, it just goes on and on. There's so much stuff going on. Uh, and StarCraft is fascinating because, yeah, it's got these three races. They're all fighting. Um, you know, they they have factions within themselves, but then you discover like in StarCraft 2, there's a progenitor race. And whenever there's a progenitor race, you know, that's good lore. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> and a progenitor race is the thing that makes all. Yeah. yeah. Like, they're from everyone's. Wait, so is this progenitor race yeah. just something that looks like all of them mashed together? The Zelnaga, yeah, is uh, <laughs> all of them mashed together. That's Cthulhu. Basically. Yeah, the great old ones even said it at the bottom. And then sometimes are. Yep. Yeah, they're just weirder looking aliens. They mean all the aliens. Yeah, I love lore, though. I, I like lore, too. And and I should know because I've watched so many YouTube lore videos about, <laughs> like, games I haven't played. But you're right. It is, it, it, it is inspiring to um, play something that there's so much love put into. Yeah. And just, like, encyclopedias had to be made around this. I don't even comprehend how you can make things like this that are so well, deep and so dense it sounds like for one both these games cannot do, yeah. do it but there's yeah. one man for both these games uh chris metzen i'm pretty sure mm. did the majority what? of the at least like i he was the brainchild behind the universes you know he had other people helping him write it i'm sure i don't know if he had missed that but he had to have because <laughs> like he said one man can do lore for two games over 25 years but he was the, the spearhead behind the lore of everything well you know what this reminds me of mythic quest Oh yeah, yeah. Because that's around a real time strategy game, right? Uh, that's right. Uh, MMO. It's RPG. MMO. M- it's, it's a very Warcraft inspired, World of Warcraft inspired MMO. But the fact that there's like this whole story, and they have like a story department that's yeah. constantly going because they're constantly updating. Yeah, yeah. yeah there was a, a game. It was a it was an action game that came out like in the 360 Xbox 360 era, called Kingdom of Kingdom of Kingdoms of Amalur, and they got R. A. Salvator. To write the lore in the story, he he wrote a lot of D and D fancy books, including like the famous one starring Drizzt Duerden, which was a dark elf um, ranger that everybody loves because he was the one good dark elf because it was very racist. <laughs> but you kind of was like, yeah, I was kind of leaned too heavy into it before, so I'll fix it in a couple of books. The Kingdoms yeah, of Amalur, yeah. But, but he, was, he was just like an older guy, so like much, much like a Mythic Quest, where uh, the writer is like this older, like fifty sci fi writer that started writing fantasy. I'm pretty sure Ari Salvatore had a similar trajectory. Yeah. And I know George R.R. R. Martin writes, uh, he wrote a story for the 
a non RTS game, uh, Elden Ring. He came up with the he idea. Did? He came up with the ideas behind the story, yeah. and then like the, some of the old characters, and then like the characters in the game. He didn't create those. He was like the game director made those, but he made the lore that led to those characters exist. Oh, that is so cool. Yeah. Yeah. So, so like they marketed it as like, oh, George R. R. Martin wrote it. And he was like, no, I wrote the backstory. Yeah. And then they made the stuff that's in the game that you like. I wrote the backstory that hopefully you like. He's very humble that way. I, that's what kind of, I like the guy. He's, yeah. he's finished writing books. Yeah. So, but there's a lot of vectors to get into these games. And one is like yeah. the gameplay. I'm more of the mechanics and gameplay. Steve's more of the lore. Yeah, Chris would play it if it was just like a bunch of cardboard, different colored cardboard pieces in a, on a screen. He'd yeah. be like, oh, this is fun because I can make these cardboard pieces, blow up these other cardboard pieces in strategic ways that benefit, you know, that are efficient. Right. Where I'm like, I want to know why these cardboard pieces are doing what they're doing. Why is this one blue? Why is this one red? I'm more on that side, too, when it comes to things like these, because it's like they are so deep and they are so interesting. Yeah. And, and, and it, it compels me to play the game to learn more about it, because otherwise I'm like, oh, I'm getting too much. I'm like being in the weeds with these type with games in general. So I'm like, I'm just this is all weeds. I don't want to be in these weeds. <laughs> Does this kind of game require that it's overworld because uh, like they're shown on the screen a lot of games that are similar to it i guess are just rpgs yeah yeah, that, yeah yeah like usually you're, you're like controlling one person typically or if a small party is still not a real-time strategy uh, double fine studios tried to make a behind the back like third real -time. person real-time strategy game yeah which was weird i enjoyed it but it was actually did it oh, twice brutal legend yeah so i'm sorry they did it twice jack black's yeah, yeah, yeah they brutal legend with Jack, Jack, strong what? Jack Black, and then they made another game that was uh with mechs, but it was a similar thing where you can control you like a little squad. About? This of mechs. isn't just a, a a platformer adventure game. It is not, it's, and in fact, that was much to the consternation of many of the people who bought it. Yeah. Oh. Like the first half is platformer, and the second half is real time strategy, or something what? like that, or the boss fight, or something like that. It's real time strategy, like top down and everything. Yeah, so they got this awesome metal inspired world, and then that's one of the things that draws you in. Is like, okay, this is like over the top. I'm playing an Iron Maiden cover. Yeah, like it's great, uh, and it looks like it's just going to be a brawler. And there's parts of it that are brawling, but it's like this open <laughs> world, and you have these big, these 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 uh, I guess battles uh, from an army against an army, and you're controlling your army as your character, Jack Black, and as yeah. brutal legend, as brutal. <laughs> Um, yeah, and those are units, the headbangers, uh, and they all have different attributes. Uh, but yeah, a lot of people are like, wait, what? This is not uh, an action game? Yeah, because the trailer shows him smacking creatures with a guitar. Yeah. As it catches fire. And it's like, you do that for like an hour, and you spend four hours commanding armies to victory. And I love that they tried something different with this yeah. game. Like, I would have loved that sort of game too, but the fact that they tried to do... Like, there were supposed to be concerts that were also wars at mm -hmm. the same time, and it fit into, like, the lore so well. What? Who would have known? So, I guess my... It's okay. Is Diablo real-time strategy or no? No, Diablo is what's called an action RPG, um, an RPG, because it uses the styling of a of an RTS, the top-down isometric view. But you control one unit. Go on. And you unit. often fight multiple units at a time. There's no resource but collection, yeah, yeah, really. Yeah, there's no... There's, so if, if there's just minimum, one guy, yeah. isometric, that is not real-time strategy. No, that's right. just an isometric RPG, which often called CRPGs because they were computer RPGs versus, like, the side, side view of, like, a Final Fantasy three. But a lot of the mechanics are similar. You click, you, you click the dude, you click the other dudes, kill the dude... Yeah. But because you're not selecting several dudes to do something while you do something right. else and with you're this not, dude. You're not building a base. You're not um, building more units. You got one guy. And, like, you're leveling that guy up, sure. And, you know, you get to choose a tech tree where you want him to go. But uh, but he doesn't have to build a fortress. No. no. He can find pieces of a mobile fortress to wear as armor. And that's actually that part of it. <laughs> I mean, it kind of part of it, I think... Oh. I, I before I got into real time strategy before they existed, I was into uh, sim games like mm -hmm. Sim City, which is all about you're building a city and trying to make it work. I mean, some people refer to these games as like Battle Sim City. Okay, <laughs> yeah, and it, it works. Yeah, um, Diablo is made by Blizzard. Do you know if it's the same engine that they use for like the uh, it's work a different for Starcraft? Engine, yeah. It is a different engine. Or was at the time. Yeah. Wow, this is dense. This is hard. Um. It's funny because we're only really wow. touching on one developer. I know. But there's so much in, yeah, in I Blizzard. I don't know who developed 
Command and Conquer. That's probably yes. the reason why I wasn't talking about that. Forget the name too. Westwood. Oh yeah, yeah, Westwood. That sounds yeah. That's right. Yeah, Command and Conquer was like a modern day Cold War styled real uh, RTS. He plays like a Soviet ish country and like a American ish country. Um, he used modern warfare like See, this, and this missiles is, and things. Age of Empires is kind of like civilization plus so that, that is battle civilization. Then, yeah, right? it's like, battle civilization. Because you start with, you choose kind of a civil, an ancient civilization. You're like, oh, I want the Egyptians. I want the Americans. I want, you know, the Italians. Mm -hmm. um, and you start in the Middle Ages. And as you, you, you do certain things and your technology tree goes up, you're like, and oh, it turns suddenly. Into Street Fighter VI, apparently. And it turns into Street Fighter VI. <laughs> But then it'll be like, oh, you've just discovered oh, the okay. trebuchet. So now you're, you can make trebuchets and the other guys haven't researched that yet. So you're beating them. They're still stuck in the 700s. Yeah. You made it to eight. Oh, wow. There's a ton of civilizations. There's a lot of civilizations. Yeah, they're on six now? Seven is coming. Well, I think people are assuming because it's like every couple of years there's a new civ and then a bunch of expansions. But this is this is where the like this guy's games are named after him. This is Sid Meier. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This, this is Sid Flippin Meyer. Yeah, it would probably the last bastage of of putting your name on something. Like this <laughs> feels like Norton's antivirus, which probably ran alongside this game, the original one. This is American McGee Civilization. <laughs> <laughs> American McGee took a big swing. Nobody knew who who they were before. Still don't know besides made an Alice in Wonderland game. Well, he uh, originally cut his teeth making levels for Doom. Really? Yeah. Oh. Was it I, id? Who are you talking about? It's, American McGee. Did you ever hear? See, that was a reference. <laughs> American McGee's Alice. Have you ever heard of that game? Yes. That's. We were talking what, about you're like, I didn't know his name was American. Yeah. It's, it, yeah, it's part, yeah, part of the title is his name. And then the game he created. I always want to play this game. I just like the idea of running around with a knife. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of games that can make that become a reality for you. It looks kind of a nightmare before Christmas. No way that is his hair. <laughs> it was his hair. So, Quake. He's like, yeah, I did Quake and I did Doom and now I'm doing Alice in Wonderland. <laughs> and then some 41 and I have a concert. <laughs> That's exactly right. God, remember Tech TV? Oh my God, yeah, the screensavers right there. <laughs> Look at that tower. Mm. That's a beefy tower. Gorgeous. You needed a beefy tower to play some of these games. Not, not these games. But, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, a twisted take. Um, but yeah, so, so there, there was a time. I guess uh, the developers wanted to be like rock stars. I want to be Sid Meier. I can't. Just I got a cool first name. It's American. Well, you know who the queen of this is, though. Oh yeah. Which we sadly Mavis Beacon. Mavis Beacon teaches. Who, who we found out was just a model they hired to. He's not a real person. Portray somebody named Mavis Beacon. Very sad to find out she was never a real person. See, that's the one I remember the most. Like, did you, oh my god! Did you see that? See what? Look! McGee? Look at the game. Yeah. I told McGee. you it was real. <laughs> oh, that is man. a throwback. That's oh, that, wait, that is game. Remember the oh, Mac game about yes. the weird little kid Why from is that earlier there? episode? Is that really what the spine looked like? There's <laughs> no way. the fuck on. Here's Carmen <laughs> San Diego. This person watched our video <laughs> and then did this. Wait, I wonder what this Robot Holy Odyssey shit. one is. This multiple Robot Odysseys by the Learning Company? These are the rabbit holes we go down. Well, they're all on <laughs> Apple II. That's what it is. Okay. Except for this one. Though. Yeah, except that CD-ROM, Windows 95, Power Macintosh. Dude, we just opened a, a friggin' hole in the world. <laughs> Mavis Beacon looks like she's always going out for a job interview. I like that you said yeah, Mavis she, Beacon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, that's an interesting take. How, what would you say? Mavis, Mavis Beacon. Mavis, which is a Mavis name. Mavis Beacon, though. Mavis is not a name of a person. <laughs> okay. I, I, I see. There are people named Mavis. Yes. I, I've never met one in person, but I'd love to meet a Mavis. Wait, and then there's Doom. You see StarCraft back here. Is that civilization? That's civilization two. What? <laughs> what is that? happening? I mean, these are also just very. Are we catch it on the most popular PC games. Tom Clancy's Politica is one of those spines. I've never heard of that. Clancy. We talked about Tom Clancy once somewhere. Yeah. Yeah, I've never heard of Politica though. It's the one right next to. Uh... Sorry. No, no. We only look. I don't know what it is. I just know it's a Tom Clancy thing because it's in the Tom Clancy font. Beacon. Beacon. To guide your way to typing. Is why I was chosen. 
And it's funny, too, because the original game, it's not like there were graphics that showed, like, hands. They didn't have, like, a mascot, except this, for on the box. This is turning into a weird day. This is a weird day. Those are the best days. I agree, but, like, we did this episode. We, we did that episode, yeah. <laughs> here's, um... Oh, they did it 11 years ago. <laughs> number munchers. <laughs> well, here's another weird one we've talked yeah, yeah. about before, but... I would say is a real time strategy. Pikmin. Oh, okay. Pikmin is the rare console based real time strategy. Um, yeah, I'd bounce off of Pikmin. Not hard, enough. harder than harder than when you drop uh, Doctor Spaceman on his on the graphic his name. Doctor Spaceman. No, the name of the character in oh. Pikmin. <laughs> Doctor Ol uh, Pro Professor oh. Captain Olimar. Captain Olimar. Okay, so he's not a doctor. Honor. He's a no. Captain. He's a captain. Captain of the uh, the SS Dolphin. You're right. This is a real-time strategy. Now we're talking, getting me into Nintendo. Yeah. But this is not their only real-time strategy game. Fire Emblem, right? Is that real-time strategy? No, that's strategy? a turn-based. Oh, it's, it's, very, it's very, it's very <laughs> turn-based. Even... Yep, yep. I, I could see there being... Wait, I feel like there's a Mega Man when there's not. But I feel like there's a Mega Man real-time strategy game somebody... So there is an older one um, that I've, I haven't... I've only been playing around with a little bit. In the arcades, it was ported to other things. There was a game called Rampart. Have you ever played I think Rampart? I Rampart. heard of Rampart. Rampart Apex Legends? Just no. say Rampart Arcade. Yeah. Oh, oh yes. yeah, I definitely played this before. Now. Well, this is three. Three of them. The yeah, Rampart was about building walls, trying not to get killed, kind of like a tower defense. Kind of like a real-time strategy. This is happening like you're not pausing. It's an arcade game. You're not going to let you pause an arcade game. You need to put more quarters in. That's so. true. Um, yeah. Does Rampart count? Are you, what are you saying? I'm saying this? Rampart absolutely counts. It had a trackball. It had a trackball. So you're at an arcade uh, machine. You could be the blue. What? You, you got to choose. You place cannons. You place walls. I'm saying this is a, a real-time strategy game of some kind. Yeah, but nothing's happening. Well, because it gives you a setup phase. So it's saying prepare uh, for enemy ships. But you can't do anything during that. It's well, just yeah, like, this I, is happening. If I, this is more tower defense thing. Yeah, because since you can't do anything while it's, the action's happening, then it's more like tower defense where you set up and you watch the dominoes fall. Mm. Well, so... Yeah, that's, that's true. This seems like a big kind of topic. This seems like <laughs> too, too, too big. So how do, how do people... Engage with this. Is this like super nerd shit? Is this mainstream? Where are we at with these games nowadays? I feel like there was super nerd shit, and then sometime in like the late aughts, you started having StarCraft tournaments broadcast and like we're taking place in Atlantic City Casino, like uh, convention centers and stuff like that. Yeah. Like you, you went to see a couple like finals or something. In yeah, Lake City, right? and it was so much fun. I think real time, I think Starcraft particularly is my favorite esport to watch because it's like one on uh, one and you get to see like this, this God view of what's happening to it's, both. It's but better chess. It's better chess. It's yeah. Chess, but fast with guns. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. All these loco is one of the, the guys that, that still streams it. Um, but yeah, lo look at this. So, you want this guy? Oh, yeah. I mean, they're, they're all good. I mean, we're not going to listen to him either. And anyway, so it's about the, the commentary helps a ton. It's kind of like if yeah. you're watching a, a baseball game or a football game without a commentator, it's not the same. Well, we could try. <laughs> yeah, we could. Um, Twitch definitely made all of this oh, stuff yeah. come Twitch got up in a big bad way. It. You know why? Because it's like me sitting next to my buddy. Someone talking to you about it, yeah. explaining it to you. Part of the fun is like how intricate it is. And then it becomes like, it all, like the people running these games, it looks like a music instrument. Yeah, oh yeah. Like you have to be so finely tuned and everything. Yeah, so in this, like you can see th there's the, the two people combating each other, Showtime and Serral. Serral's one of the best Zerg players in history. So um, it's always fun to watch him. Uh, but you see, it'll show you like their supply, which is that number right now. It's 74, 73 out of 90. That's how many units they can have, basically. And it shows you how it breaks down how many workers. That's the wrench. How many attackers. That's the, the sword. And the resources is what they have right now. Yeah, one of the things I always appreciated with the, the UI for watching like esports of uh, StarCraft in particular is, yeah, it shows you what, what level everybody's resources are at. And you can see how they dip as they build new units. You can see how they dip as... Units die. You just see numbers falling off, and you're like, "Oh, 
just at a glance, you can tell, oh, this person's, you know, being destroyed at this not on, off-screen location. Yeah. And, like, camp, and, you know, part of the fun is, like, watching the, com- the commentator team try to, like, find where this battle, this skirmish is happening mm-hmm. or where this uh, resource drain is occurring and, like, focusing the camera so the audience can see. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I guess I guess in these games, all everything is happening at once. Yeah, yeah, I like all over the map. So you have to be good at the game to commentate the game because you have to yeah. know what's going on, where to focus, and you know, the, the good commentators would be like, "Hey, this guy's employing this strategy. The other guy's employing this strategy. I think this guy's gonna win. We'll see what happens." And sometimes, like, they pull something out. They're like, "I've never seen this before. Mm. It's incredible." And seeing it live is amazing because they put the two people on stage yeah. in in soundproof booths because they can't hear it or else. It, it destroys everything. So they're in a soundproof booth on the stage. Everyone in the crowd seeing exactly what's happening at all times. Um, and it gets hype. Like, we were screaming our heads off at, at the <laughs> one. I remember there, there was a final. Um, it was this Italian player, Stefano. And he was way down. But he found this crazy technique um, to basically suck up all of the other person's characters <laughs> into one block and then blow them all up at once. And we were nice. just like, what? <laughs> Oh my god! And everyone got on their feet and like lost their minds. Yeah. Um. This guy. Yeah, yeah. I thought you were gonna say he sucked up all his resources, and I was gonna be like, he drank his milkshake. (laughs) Yeah, he drank it up. And then the wonderful thing about this game is that you have incomplete information, right? There's the fog of war. This is the yeah. coolest. That is so overkill. Oh, it's look awesome. I mean, that's why each one kind of died so hard. He spent so much money wow, on look production at the value. Production value. And it's funny, too, because um, most of the people who are really good at, at these games are in Korea. They're in South Korea. And why? It, they were, well, so, something culturally caught on there yeah, that like, didn't catch yeah, on Star, anywhere StarCraft else. became like an eSport or at least a publicly like accepted way form of entertainment for other people that weren't playing early on. And Starcraft kind of stayed, kept its level of popularity throughout until two came. They out. still play Brood War on television in Korea. Yeah, the, the 20, old one. 25 year old expansion That's to cool. Starcraft One. So yeah, so it just stayed relevant the whole time. So then here it kind of waxed and waned, and only like the hardcore kept playing Starcraft Brood Wars. And then when two came out, it had a renewed interest. But it was it, it was Damn it, Dylan, we need an upgrade. <laughs> it was to so such, we could do this. It was to such a point that um anyone who was not from Korea was called a foreigner. Even though it's an American game made by an American studio. But oh man, the Koreans are great and the Korean foreigners, game. it's gonna be a Is tough time for the foreigners. Yeah, that's that's an advertisement. Damn, dude, Dylan, we gotta get into this. <laughs> I mean, you had to get into this ten years ago. Yeah, yeah. Now it's uh, yeah, sadly, yeah. <laughs> pretty dead. Well, actually, th- yeah. Didn't we talk about esports as a whole? Is kind of like it's not like that. This is probably back when they had more money than God. The, yeah, the, the bubble yeah. bursts to Definitely, play God yeah. games, right? Uh, and and it's very sad because it's still it's still so fun to watch. Like these games, yeah. I can go and see. Watch pro, watching pros go at it is awesome. So is Twitch still the place to go watch esports stuff now? I never really see. I never watched it live. Um, except for in person. I watch it live in person. And, and if there's a big competition, I guess I'll watch it on Twitch. Yeah, that would be where you would go. Um, but a lot of the, the existing YouTubers, they're YouTubers who are like watching. Um, they're not watching it live either. They download replays and they commentate on the replays. Yeah. One of the cool things about StarCraft cool. 2 we is do that. Yeah. And one of the cool things about it is like in the game, you can download a replay of someone else's game that they uploaded. Yeah. So then the, your game will play their game for you so you can look at what's going on real time. What do you mean? Like, he, like a replay? Yeah, like a file of their game that went on. You can... So it's it's a tiny file. Yeah, so it's, it's not a, yeah, it's not it's a not video, a video play. file. Yeah, it's a... The data is recreated on your computer. It's like all the commands those people entered as they entered them just yeah. happens on your screen. Wait, the game is recording you? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's one big keylogger. I know, but, but Only just, for StarCraft. But honestly, so. I'm just thinking of this. I mean, it's it's kind of like... You could tell a story within this world using someone else's war yeah. if you were able to get the files to operate the three-dimensional camera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and people upload the these space. for that reason, so you, other people can go and look at them, and yeah, and then you can rotate yeah, can cameras I, into can ways Can I do in. something yeah, live yeah, yeah, that's and why I, spin around and stuff? Yeah, I mean, that's how the around, commentators do it. Yeah, you spin around, you can jump around the map, you can pause it. What's you can, the program? You can review it's, it's the game. Has yeah, a the game has a spectator mode built spectator into mode, it. Yeah. So you just you join the game as a spectator and you can well, do that. But no, that's but I'm, beyond I'm even, difficult to comprehend. 
I mean, not There's necessarily a whole because other if the peripheral you would have to install. Well, not necessarily because if the game's recording all of your keystrokes in order to process them, it just also saves a, sh a shadow copy to be like, now if you run this data back in, like Chris said, it recreates its keystrokes in the game. But then if you're saying live, you can do it yeah. live because you basically join as a third player. As who a is oh, not so as, sorry, I'm so sorry. As, yeah, the commentator is using spectator mode. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's. Yeah, but like, okay, how big are these games? How much? I'm GPU, CPU, everything. How is that possible to? So at the time they were big, it wasn't, if I remember correctly, it wasn't super taxing. No, it's still not. How? So it complicates because they have a beefy a rig and it up. <laughs> yeah. It's a world, it's with, a world it's, that's at war well, in your computer. CPUs were very strong at that point <laughs> in relative space. to GPUs. In space. I'm, uh, if I remember correctly. You're correct. Yeah, CPUs yes. were stronger than GPUs and then they. Yeah, and they kind of flip flop now. But yeah, so at the time it was like, oh, the CPU has plenty of space to hold all this data we just need to be able to pump it through the gpu so we can pump down the graphics textures as need be and keep in mind like each of these clients like they have their own computer so like it, it, the two competitors each have a computer and the spectator has their own computer they're all yeah. just rendering it, it once what it, what's a peer-to-peer -peer would it connect it to a blizzard server it used to be peer-to-peer -peer, but now the, the big starcraft 2 is all connected to the blizzard server oh okay. is yeah. there a starcraft 3 there is not but a lot of Here's developers. Yeah, there's a lot of. Well, that was pretty funny. Did you see that? It's probably just thrown together from existing. Inappropriate for time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm assuming this is just grabbing a bunch of clips from the existing game and saying like. I hate it when they do that because I'm always like, yeah. I want to at least make some new stuff if you want me to look What's at your concept. Thing? So I wonder if it's. Well, that's is that uh, like familiar to you? Zero, no, zero that's tool. weird though. It's a yeah, version think, of Zeratul. I think they from, actually rendered this. Yeah. But he's a character in the spinoff Heroes of the Storm. Yeah. That and, Blizzard and, made, which is a MOBA. I know it's been like StarCraft in here, but <laughs> I am curious because I... The original StarCraft, when did that come out? 96, 95? Yeah, 95. Something. And then what, how long did it take for them to make a sequel? And were people clamoring for a sequel? 14, 15 years. Yeah, uh, StarCraft Two didn't come out till two thousand ten or eight. Oh, I thought it was even in the tens. Yeah, it was a it was a while. It was at least ten years. Oh, um, well, because they were life and half the hog of uh, World of Warcraft for a while. Yeah, and then people were like, "You need to make StarCraft. Get back to your roots." Well, people like, Fine. were playing Brood War still. Like it was crazy popular, in especially Korea. in Korea. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah, and then like Hearthstone came out, I think before they did StarCraft 2. So they had a bunch of other irons in the fire. Yeah. But people are like, but we want more StarCraft. So they're like, fine, we'll make a really, very, a very good StarCraft 2. We'll sell it to you in pieces. And maybe it was just in my head. But I, I feel like people wanted StarCraft 2 for a long time. Yeah, I mean, th there was a lot of hype for it um, for the people who cared. Well, let me, yeah. let, me, let me back up. It seems like people continued to play StarCraft while they waited for StarCraft 2. Yeah. Yeah, Is I that felt you? like this probably. Yeah, I mean, I actually got into StarCraft a little late. Yeah, um, yeah your cousin would play, yeah. got you into it. I know he's got me into it. Yeah, my cousin John was, yeah. was into it and his friends were in it and they would have LAN parties and they'd all play against each other and I'd be like, all right, well, I want to get in on this. And it was tons of fun. I mean, having... You could have a LAN party back then where there was no internet connection. You just connected. There's a room of people plugging their computers together. Yeah. Unprotected. Unprotected. You had to trust. And we did, and it was it was fun. I guess part of the appeal of this is they had to design it knowing the graphical limitations. So for someone like me who's used to like uh you know a uh, AAA platformer title as like the biggest of the big, that's only following one person, which is why I can look the way it looks. Yeah. For these, it's always they're gonna downres it a little bit just so they can put more stuff in it because the whole board has to be going and operating at the same time, and right? you have to make it readable. Yeah. And that's the kind of the main thing. Like you got to make, they make them like, if you zoom in, like these are chunky out of proportion characters. Cause you have to be able to tell what they are at a glance. Um, from way, way, way high, from up. way, way, yeah. way high up. And which, they have to be distinct, which interestingly, uh, Blizzard took on as like their art direction, which I actually enjoyed. Cause, um, there's a comic book writer, uh, artist who draws similarly. Who's that? I wish I could remember his name. He has a video game studio now. He made a couple of games that are like, oh. but like the chunky shoulder pauldrons and like armor, like big honking swords. Um, I know the one famous artist was Samwise with with Blizzard, but I yeah, guess. yeah, he worked with Blizzard. Yeah, but like I, it was interesting how he, he he scaled up the chunky design from like a Warcraft and Starcraft to World of, World of Warcraft, where they still look the same as they do on Starcraft or Warcraft. They're just you follow them in from a third person view. Um. 
Ah, his his airship game airship syndicate is the name of the studio he made. Um, I'm more. You said they went from. Here's the World of Warcraft in '99. That was that was a trailer. It didn't look like that when the game came. This is what it looked like when it came. No, no, that's not what. No, that was still pre like beta stuff. Because I played the beta and I played the release, and it did. It looked like. Yeah, like this is what it looked like when it came. This is what everyone was losing their lives to when I was in college. It was less about what it looked like and more about how deep it was and yeah, what you were able to do in the game. Could forge. Yeah. That's a lot of naked things. Interactions. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bunch of perverts. Joe Joe Madura. That was his name. Uh, the comic book artist. Yeah, dude, like he had a, he like his version of Wolverine is one of my favorite versions. Um. Yeah, Joe Matt. Yeah, so he, like he started his own video game company to make R- an, an RPG. Was the first game he made. He was just like, I want an RPG that has my characters. It has plays like an old Final Fantasy game. Mm. And then he has had a couple other games since, including a League, League of Legends, uh, a light game. But yeah, so like, I I, yeah, I feel like him and Samurai like had the same sense of sensibility when it came to drawing characters. And he was just like, yeah, I wonder if he was even an alias. Of him at Blizzard, and used to do. big chunky boys. He was he was like Rob Layfield, but he could draw feet. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm getting some definitely 90s like Leafield esque vibes. Very from 90s. These. Yeah. yeah. So his his 2000s are a little cleaner, especially with like the digital coloring. Yeah. But yeah, everybody's chunky. Anybody in armor has just like giant paw was like bigger than their head, and it's like you can't lift your arm. You would smash your ears. I think he he didn't come up with on- onslaught. I don't think. I know he drew a good on- onslaught. I like that this is just a YouTube video of someone leafing through comics. Yeah. Barely leafing. He's just like shuffling around. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, man, StarCraft's fun. Use this. <laughs> There's the thesis. There's, this is a good game. Yeah. Um, and, and the thing is, yeah, it's kind of been a fallow uh, genre for a while now. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, a like- lot of uh, people defected from Blizzard and they started a new studio. And they're making a new game that is uh, basically a spiritual successor to StarCraft. What's oh, it called? About that. It's called something very generic that I don't remember. Um, look up Warfight. Blizzard. <laughs> it's like Warfight. X Blizzard. RTS. Yeah. Try that. Eh. Stormgate. 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 <laughs> yes. I apologize. Oops. Sorry. Triple S League. Oh yeah, there's also the, all the space RTSs we need to get to, like the four X games. Oh yeah, yeah, which I haven't played much of. What was it exploration, exploitation, expansion, and the other X? But, but the, yeah. the idea with this game, um, the theme is instead of you know Zergs and humans, it's humans and uh, demons. So she's she's just a uh, ghost. Uh, yeah, she's just basically a ghost. But uh, there's demons, and I believe there's also uh, Seraphim. So it's like so angels, Protoss and <laughs> yeah, Protoss. spawn it's in the future, spawn in the future, but uh, a lot more of them. Um, yeah, this is just, yeah, a demon. Kind of like what if Doom, but also space RTS. What if Doom, but also <laughs> space RTS. Well, yeah, this is all just, uh, you know, nonsense uh, video. Uh, cutscenes, yeah. We need gameplay. I do distinctly remember a lot of these games had great cutscenes. Yes, and great like, yeah. CGI and pre-rendered things, but then the actual content itself. Well, because because the limitations of the time to like yes, yeah, CD-ROM media, you had so only so much RAM that in video RAM you could use, but then yeah, video file you just played the video file. Yeah, so you always, yeah, and Blizzard always have really good like art direction. They still do with their cinematics. Like I just watched the World of Warcraft cin- cinematics, not knowing what happened in between because they look really awesome. Yeah. Yeah, uh, you can Starcraft just watch the same, them. Yeah. And there's a lot of it. Of it. But yeah, Stormgate, try to see if you can see some gameplay, and you'll just be like, oh, yeah, that looks about right. Stormgate. Starcraft in, orcs in hell. <laughs> orcs in hell. Very Starcrafty RTS made by X Starcraft. There we go. There you go. Oh, look at that. Uh, you're like, wait, so this is a different game? Yes, it is a different game. <laughs> The maps on the other side, you see. Yeah, now the maps on the right. So, what makes these games fun for you? Um, 
I mean, I talked about it a little bit already, but um, crushing your enemies, seeing them dripping before you, hanging the lamentations of their works. Yeah, finding clever ways to def- to beat and be beaten. Really, it, it, I love that. Just like seeing new strategies employed mm-hmm. and the execution. I think the execution is really important. Like, if I'm not clicking like a madman and telling things to go, like I want a, a great plan that's hard to execute, <laughs> and then when you execute it, you feel like a golden god. Yeah. I uh, spoken like a true entrepreneur. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, it's too much for me. I can't do it. I, th- I don't think my brain can handle it, but it's probably why you're a better leader than I am. <laughs> you you got to start with like a brutal legend, something that eases you into the uh, RTS-ness. A Pikmin, if you can handle a Pikmin, but it sounds like you're not too much of the Pikmin either. I'm not against the Pikmin. <laughs> I'm not against the Pikmin. I guess, yeah. I mean, it is, it is, it's just an interesting concept because it's the idea of spending your time not being... You're essentially being a proactive player instead yeah. of an active player. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. It's not just a linear, you know, you're on a ride sort of game. You're making your way through a story. And there is a story, but, like, you have to direct your how you're playing to get there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, not for everyone. Holy crap. But the people it's for, man, man, are they into it. <laughs> no, well, let's get into it. I, and maybe we, can, maybe we can do some commentary on one sometime. Yeah, we'll, uh, you know. We'll have a Stormgate tournament. Stormgate Clueless Gamer tournament yep. with commentary. That would actually be pretty fun. I mean, if you can get Conan to do it, I'm in. Yeah. Well, we got seven Otherwise, green I'm circles out. going. We got seven green circles clicking all around. We're using the mouse. Uh, we're going up. Yeah. WASD moves the camera, which is always annoying to me in this because I'm always like, I keep trying to instinctively use it to like do something that's not the camera. <laughs> yeah. Now, that'd be fun to actually have two people who are not into RT. Have you two. Yeah. Play a game blind. I'm not. I comment. What do you mean? Hate them. You hate all RTS is what you're saying? I, don't, I hate playing them. I don't hate them. I hate playing okay. them. Okay. You just want to read about the characters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Backstory. <laughs> I, I just want to see why, who the, these cool Protoss dudes are. RTS games. Divisive. Yeah. <laughs> That's it for us. Thank you so much. Go play an RTS game. Let us know what you think. Let us know what your favorite RTS games are. And uh, this was pretty much a StarCraft episode. <laughs> Cool. When are we going to start recording? <laughs> Young John!